Hello, today I'd like to show you a data logger for your automated strategies or indicators. Uh, this demonstration is for CTrader, but we're going to do one for NinjaTrader. And the data logger can be used for any platform. It was written in Microsoft.net in C Sharp. So it can pretty much, if you're using Microsoft technologies, you can, uh, and if you're using C Sharp in your, even if you're not using C Sharp or any other language but using Microsoft, you can use this assembly. So you, the idea behind it is that um, you're running your automated strategies or your indicators. You've written the code yourself or somebody else, else has, and you want to log um, trade activity. You want to log indicator values, because even though you might analyze your trade history results and analyze your robot that way, you're not really going to get a full in-depth analysis of your, how your operate, how your robot is operating, unless you actually log as much information as possible and then you can analyze that information. So currently, so I'll just quickly show you this page. This is where you access the data logger. You can download it for free. If you go to software utility applications, you should be able to download it. The page tells you it in more details. Um, and the idea behind it is we've made it so simple because it's encapsulated or it's wrapped up in one single, uh, like an add-on, it's an assembly. You reference it from your CBOT or your, or your automated strategy. And just with a couple of lines of code, you could actually start writing to the log file. It creates a new log file for each day. Uh, the log file format can be text, CSV, or any other format that you want to use for your analysis. It will actually log it that way. Um, mostly, it will probably be used for CSV or text. If you've got Excel, I would do CSV. Um, and then you've got another method you can use where you can open up um, that file. I'll show you later on. As soon as it's finished doing the work, you can actually open up Excel. It automatically puts them into columns, so you can do your analysis straight away. The idea is, is you can also do back testing and record the values as you're going through a back test history. So you could go back five years and say, look at all the price when a certain indicator was a certain value. What was the price of a certain symbol? And you can log that information and then analyze it at the end of the back test. And like I said, it's very useful also for running automated strategies and logging the information. Personally, I feel if you're doing automated algorithmic development or your automated strategies, sorry, if you're running automated strategies, you really need more of an in-depth analysis of how your strategy is doing and you need more of an in-depth analysis of the data from your indicators as well so the analysis is very important not just the trade history results so this uh, this add-on for C trader is very important um, and I think if you find it very useful the reason we've done this is mostly because uh, with C trader at the moment you have um, where'd it go with C trader at the moment you have, um, what do I call it? Hold on, I'll show you. It's got login where you can, I'll just run this robot here and show you. So, sorry, I'm babbling a bit now. With CTrader, what you do, they actually offer a log tab on the actual platform itself, which actually logs um, what's happening with your automated strategy at that moment in time. So you can do print statements, you can look at all events, um, you can look at info and trading info, nothing really going on. But if you were trading, you'd put the C trader events that are happening, like a position opened at this value and all the rest of it. Okay, that's all great and good. And you can put the print statements all over your app, your, in your code to print, and print them to the screen. Um, but the problem with this is if you ever stop and restart your robot, it loses the value, it clears it. If I start it again, it's gone back to the start. Um, if you close the platform and restart, you lose that historical data. If your platform crashes, you lose historical data. Um, and also, even if you did have all this data in here, if you run it for your algorithm for one week, one week or one month, you've got one month of text going down in lines. And it's not in a tabular format for exporting to Excel either. Um, you can right click on the chart and copy all and copy that to Notepad. Um, but what this add-on does for CTrader, it allow you to actually automatically create a new, a new file, date time stamped, each day. So your algorithm can run um, day in day out say seven days a week and you know that you've got historical data of information of your trade activity going back so for example if you see if you look at your historical trade and you see a trade that's um, shouldn't have been there the, 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 your algorithm your strategy shouldn't have done what it done you could actually go back through the log files you can import it into Excel and you can find exactly why it went wrong. You can look at, with, with this analysis of data that you've recorded, plus with the charting and all the rest of it, you've got more of an idea to find out why your algorithm was working the way it was and it will help you correct it. So it's very invaluable. So there you go. So this, like I said, this only does this on here and that's all you can do. So so what you'll do, you'll you'll go and do go through the add to cart and you'll go to checkout. You'll check out the uh, files. It will download it to your downloads directory. It'll download one file. I've already got it here. It's the kakago.data.logger. 
it's a compressed file I've put it into the robots directory if I open it up you can see it contains a folder called clickover.data.logger example that contains just a, um, a Visual Studio files I tried building with source just for this algo and it, for some reason C trade is not allowing me to do that so I've just included the folder as well um, you'll see you've got your algo file and normally you just double click on that and it installs it into your uh, C algo or C trade platform and then you've got the actual uh, DLL, which is the core logic for doing the login. So it saves you having to write the code and it allows you just to write one line of code to do the login. So what you need to do is extract all of this to the uh, robots directory. Hold on. I think it's created a new directory for it. Yes, it did. I'm just going to extract here. And the reason for that is now I've got to find it. Hold on a sec. So the DLL is there and the data logger should be in there as well sorry about that it's all hidden in it there it is data logger example so if I double click on that it'll add it to your see uh, algo and if I go down to see algo oh, I have got the source code thank God for that because before I didn't have the source code because I didn't have the folder now I know if you download it it's going to work you're going to see the source code there is a problem with the platform that it wasn't allowing me to um, build with source for some unknown strange reason so when you first load it you might have to do this so if I go to the source code you may have to if it doesn't build if you click on there and it doesn't build it's built it succeeded and it's built because maybe the assembly is in the same folder but you might want to use move that assembly to another folder so where you've got the sorry about this is a bit of a mess in there where you've got this data logger file um, you might want to create a separate folder which I've already done at the top called click algo assemblies or third-party assemblies drop it in there and then you can access it from there so if this doesn't work you just go manage for references go to libraries and then you browse sources robots and you can access it from the robots because I put it into the click algo assemblies you can access it in there apply and then build blah 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 okay let's do it again I go browse maybe I didn't do the checkbox I'll access the one that's in robots there you go Bill Whew. so that's all it is and what I'm going to do now is just go through uh, the code with you to explain what it actually does so you can do the login yourself um, I'll just get rid of all that again okay so I'll go from the top down I'll do a code um, like a handover like a little walkthrough of the code to explain um, how you can use this this is the example project um, and as long as you've got a reference to that DLL it opens up a lot of opportunities for you to do a lot of login really and I'm sure a lot of you are doing this already and you've probably got your own third-party DLLs but this is probably for people uh, who haven't got great amount of programming experience and they just want the most simplified way of logging their information to a file and then analyzing that results so um, at the top here you need to give it full access or at least file access so that it's going to write to your file system it's going to create the log files uh, in this occasion I've got a parameter just called show log file that I'll show you that in a minute that that will actually open up your um, whichever application you specify for it to open up so if you've set a CSV file to open up in Excel it'll open up Excel if it's notepad it'll open up notepad if it's a text file I've just declared a, a simple moving average because I'm just going to show you how to do record some indicator values and then when the robot first starts so as soon as you click the play button it calls this on start button uh, sorry it calls this on start method so this on start method will get called we've just created or initialized our uh, indicator here simple moving average um, and now this is the bit you need to know the trade logger so what you need to do is when you do the reference you need to do using clickogre.data.logger at the top as long as you've got this you've got the reference to the add-on or the assembly you add this it means you can now use it in the code so trade logger dot set directory I see if I've got my dot notation no I haven't if you're using Visual Studio and you click dot it'll actually show you all the different types of methods so that's why I strongly recommend you use Visual Studio because you can see all the properties and methods that you can use with this trade logger um, assembly okay but I'll explain the most basic ones for you as we go through here so you set the first thing you do and you on start you do it once you set the log directory so in this case I have to do duplicate uh, backslashes because that's the way you do with strings um, you could have got away with it and just done as you would normally write it and uh, in this case I'm putting the log file in a directory called uh, you could just put an ampersand at the front if you want 
So in this case, I'm doing uh, click algo logs. So you can specify any directory you want. It's where you want to put your log files. So for each robot, you can have a different folder. Okay, so in this case, I'm just going to do logs. I could call this robot one logs or something like that. If your, um, if your directory doesn't exist, it will create it for you. So there you go, just do it straight for you. And that's all you need to do is just to create um, a path for your robot login. Then you specify the extension you want to use. You can do text, X, uh, CSV, or any other format. It's going to come out as just text anyway, but it depends on how you want to use it. Um, so you specify the extension, okay? And that's it, it's set up, that's all you need to do. So it's quite easy, it's just two lines of code to set it up. Now you can use it. So in this case, on the on tick, we're saying if the count equity goes below 100, send a trade warning. So it'll actually print to the log file um, a warning, and then that'll stop logging. Now the idea behind that is if you stop in login because the, it's just giving you an example, how could you stop the login while the robot is running? So for an example, if you didn't wanna, in this case, because if the value did equity did go below 100, because it's on tick, the on tick gets called every price change, which could be many times per second. So you don't want this print into the log file many times per second, you'll end up with thousands of them. So it's just a demonstration to show you can stop the login and only print it once. Um, but it also shows you how you can put warnings to say if your equity is below a certain value and things like this. So it gives you more flexibility to log information that you want to analyze later on, not just for data, but for the behavior of your algorithm. Then we've got the on bar, which is the close of every candle. So in this case, as an example, I've put a try catch block in here. What this does, this will just try to run this code in here. If it fails, it will catch the exception or it catch the error that occurs in here. It will then go into this line and it will actually You've got another method here for the trade logger called error. Now that will log an error message, ex.message, to the log file. So you, this is a way of showing you how to capture errors in your algorithm. Again, it will show you if there's serious bugs that you're not completely not aware of that could be affecting your um, trades and, and losing you money. And then we've got here the login of indicator values. So we're just saying if the simple moving average result last value is greater than 80, uh, print this to the log file. So you're using info now. And you're just saying, you just print this message, SMA is greater than 80, and then you actually print out the actual value of the SMA, what it actually was. And this bit here is just formatting it so you can only got four, um, four decimal places after the decimal point. Okay, and on here as well, on the on stop, this gets called when the robot stops. This parameter show log file, which was the user defined parameter at the top, you can have it yet true or false. If it's true, it will actually, if you specify this method in the trade logger, it will open up, it will actually show you the log file automatically to your screen. Um, this is just showing you some of the methods that are available. If you use it in Visual Studio, you can see in more detail the methods. So I'll just build that. Now I'm gonna run it for you. So first thing I'm gonna do is quickly go back to the code. So in this case is when you start the robot, it's literally just gonna do nothing. Okay, it won't do anything um, because your account balance or my account balance is not below 100 it won't do that and because the bar's not closed it won't print those values I could wait for uh, one minute to occur but I want to do another example is to show you a back test <clears throat> there's another way you can use this for login information is you can run a back test going back five years and you could record various different types of information for analysis for a certain symbol okay or a certain indicator what that indicator was and then <clears throat> you can use these values for your trading to, to see what they were so, okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to run a back test now just to show you it working. Um, so it's going to log the file to uh, logs there. I've got it here. So here's a few it's created already. Let me oh, go back. No, it's not created the folder there. Okay, so under click algo, see click algo, it's not created the log folder. So I just want to demonstrate um, if I back test this, it will create the log file and it will actually... Um, record the values from the back test. So if I go onto there, go onto back test, get rid of that back screen. So I'm just going to run a short back test. So what the back test is going to do, just quickly again, because it's one hour, every hour it's going to print out, um, it's going to print out a record in the log file only if the SMA was above 80 or below 20. Then it will print out the SMA values, okay? So it will look at, every, at the close of every bar, it will say, was the SMA simple moving average above 80 or below 20. If so, let's print it to the log file. That's just an example there. So if I go back and I run this, and while I'm running it, I'm gonna show you 
it's created, see it's created the log file because it didn't exist. Now if you look to the right, it's buffering, even though the backtest, okay, what's happened here is, backtest is finished. It's created the log file there. Um, because we've got yes, show log file, because it's a text file, it's a text format we've just, we've shown, it's actually uh, opened it up in Notepad. It's a comma delimited file in Notepad, and it showed us the date, uh, the type of information that you're logging. It actually tells you where, um, if I close this, it actually tells you where the login occurred, which method. It was on the on bar, and it was the class date logger example and the namespace Cialgo. So if I go back to here, it actually tells you the namespace, uh, see the namespace, the class, and the method where the error occurred. So this is also very useful if you have a very complex algorithm. It will actually tell you exactly, and you're logging an error, instead of saying info, it would say error. It will tell you the date and time, it will tell you exactly where in your algorithm the error occurred, and then it will show you the error message if you log it. But we haven't. In this case, we're just showing you the SMA value has been less than 20, and this is the value. So the SMA value is less than 20 for all of here, actually for the whole lot. Okay, so again, that's text. If I change that to CSV, and build it, and then run a back test again. What will happen is it will now create a CSV file. I don't have Excel installed. There you go. Pity. If I had Excel installed, it would open up Excel, and it would actually show you. Uh, it will actually auto. It will know this is a comma delimited file. It'll actually create columns for each one of these values. So it will actually be already set up for you to do your filtering or your analysis, what you want to do with Excel. So it will actually show you that one, two, three, four. It'll actually show you four columns. That's right, Nick. One, two, three, four. Yeah, it'll show you four columns. So that's an example of what you can do. Uh, yeah, speak about that. I didn't have Excel installed on this. It's just another server. This would actually have showed you it. It's automatically have opened up Excel anyway, or you could have opened it's a CSV file, so you know you can import into Excel anyway. But the idea is you don't have to import and do the filter, and it's for people that don't know Excel very well. It will actually automatically do it for you. Okay. Um, just quickly, if I go back to the code now, so these are just some of the ideas you can use. Um, again, you can put as much information or as little information as you want to put in there to to log. Um, and you can use these three different types of login, which is uh, warning, info, or error. And again, you've got your extension you want to use, you can specify, and then your file path. So the main things behind this uh, login is just make sure you put using at the top. Make sure you add a reference to the um, assembly, okay? Make sure you put using at the top to use the actual assembly, which, which namespace you can use. And then specify on your on start the directory you want to use. You see I put the ampersand at the front, but when I built it, it put the extra backsplashes in. It specifies the path that you're going to actually write the log files to. Then you, then you put the file extension that you want to create at the end of the file. And then that's it. So it's just two lines of code. And then one line of code after that to actually write what you want to do. Now, just one last thing. If you did do trade logger dot stop login, at some point, uh, if account equity goes above 100, you can put trade logger dot start login. So you could easily have done that on here. Copy and paste, copy and paste. So you could have done this. Okay, bear with me. And then you could have just done the start login. And like I said, it's not used to this development environment. So you don't have you press the dot, nothing shows up. It's not picking up the, it's called a dot notation, it's not picking up the uh, methods and properties. So again, you're not going to know what's there. If you're actually right, if you're actually using this development environment with Cialgo, which is fine, you know, it's fair enough, but it's very basic. You really want to start using Visual Studio, um, which is a bit more powerful. There you go. I keep saying that, then I'm sorry. So if account.equity is greater than 100, you start logging again. So you could put that in there. Okay, I think that's enough information to get you guys going, uh, and girls. So one last thing, and it's the fact that if you would like us to, uh, it's, it's not picking that up because it's not the right value. If you would like us to, it's a capital L, implement this into your strategies. So if you already have a strategy written and you're, you find this a bit too complex, 
um, and you've got a requirement to log certain information and you want to use our assembly and you want our services, we can do that for you. So if you send us an email, we'll actually uh, give you a quote for implementing full analysis and design uh, data logging onto your algorithm or indicator. Okay, thank you.